Tonight, I'm here to talk to you about transforming high schools. There is no more difficult challenge in our country than transforming high schools. To begin my talk, I want to start with a request from all of you. Can I have you reach in your pocket and pull out your wallet? <laughs> How many of you have a credit card? How many credit cards do you have? Yell it out. Let's hear it. One. Just one? Did somebody say just one? What does that credit card do for you? That credit card, that credit card is a tool. It's a platform. It connects you, the buyer, with people who want to sell you things. You're a consumer that's trying to reach a merchant. That credit card is so important, so valuable, that you will pay for the opportunity to use it. And that merchant will also pay the opportunity to use it. That credit card is so valuable as a tool, as a connector, that both of you pay just for the chance to use it. Now what does that have to do with school reform? Take a look at these two guys. On your left is Shad James. He's an executive from a very profitable, highly, highly regarded construction firm in my hometown of Albuquerque. People would die to have a career at his firm. They're great corporate citizens, and they treat their people very well. On your right is a young man named Oscar Madrano. Oscar, his family are, is uh, Mexican immigrants, hardworking people, and Oscar is their pride and joy. He's got another brother, Ocalino. Those two guys are their pride and joy of their parents. They're smart, ambitious, thoughtful young men, the kind of kids that you want to be around. Now, Oscar and his family, they don't have a lot of social capital. They don't know many people. As a matter of fact, there's no reason for them to know Shad. It's the role of a school to be the connector. That's how we change the lives of young people, and that's how we propel our economy in the future. Why is that important? Why should you care about a poor kid in Albuquerque? If you look at this pie graph, what you see in orange is the number of qualified workers currently in our economy. And what you've got is about half of the people in our economy that are working, supporting the entire population. The other half of folks aren't working. They're either too young or too old, those are the folks in green, or they're unqualified, they're the folks in blue. So you've got one worker for every two people, and our economy moves because of that. Next, you've got the future. And the future is three people for every one worker. Because we're getting older, the baby boomers are exiting the labor market. The folks in orange are getting smaller. Meanwhile, um, the people in green, the people who work, or the people who can't work, are getting bigger because, they're, uh, because of the aging population. We're at a point when we better start caring about those kids in blue. We better start thinking about our own future as well as their future. And we can't afford to neglect them any longer. Our economy is not going to run without it. How do we connect? We do that by building schools that are platforms that connect employers with young people. Thrilling learning <coughs> opportunities for young people. Opportunities for employers to teach young people about what's possible in their future. In this picture, you've got an architect who knows these boys and has known them for a year. He's watched their development, he's seen how much they've learned, and he 
has been one of their teachers. How do you invite industry into your school? It starts with the design of curriculum. So you invite them in to teach you about what cutting edge practice is in the industry. You have them train your folks, train your teachers, because educators are not necessarily content experts in that way. And then you ask them to assess whether students have learned. So in the case of the picture I just showed you, that architect is judging whether the students have learned. That feedback goes back to the teacher, and then redesign happens. It's authentic, it's real, it captivates the minds of young people, and it engages a whole part of our populace in the work of school. It makes school real. All right, you know what that is. Now, the space shuttle. Complicated, very complicated piece of machinery. Command and control driven, tightly organized. You don't get off script with the space shuttle because eight people are strapped to 6, 000, 6 million pounds of thrust and you don't know what's gonna happen if you get off um, out of the organizational design that we've got. That's the way our school is organized. Tight. There is no room for error. Everything that a kid needs to know, it's delivered on time, every day, no exceptions. No matter whether or not the student learns at the pace that's designed in the organization. Now think about it. You want kids in organizations that are that tightly scripted? Or do you want them in living organizations? Dynamic interdependent ways that we nurture and prosper together like an ecosystem. This is a picture of four boys at a Lego competition sponsored by my school. Now, these four boys are characters, right? There's two boys that are hard at work. See them? Those two boys are building, they're learning, they're thinking. One boy's looking out the window. <coughs> He's not engaged. And another boy is trying to blow his uh, brother's tower over. He's trying to knock it down. That's adolescence, everybody. <laughs> Ten-year-olds need to go to school in living organizations. Organizations that can adapt to who they are as opposed to them adapting to what the organization is. Now, this is a problem across the country. It's not just in Albuquerque. It's everywhere. 50% drop-off rates among Latino boys is unacceptable. The call to arms is for you to engage in school. People in schools do not know what reality is. are tightly organized, monolithic organizations, impenetrable. The public must engage in schools if they're going to change. You need to ask school principals and teachers, what about my students learning, my young person's learning, looks like reality? Is a standardized test reality? It isn't. And it's up to you, the public, to start asking. When will our schools look like reality? Thank you for your time.